In geography, it's really good to have case studies, great examples which really show your understanding of different events. It's also good to be able to compare different events as well. These are usually HICs and LICs. So today we're going to look at two examples of earthquakes, one that happened in Chile and one that happened in Nepal. As GCSE geographers, you should not only recognise the names of these countries, but where they're located. Chile is in South America, on the west coast, whilst Nepal is in Central Asia, to the north of India. Chile is much wealthier than Nepal, with a higher GDP and HDI, so by comparing these earthquakes we can see how wealth might play a part in the different effects that were experienced. The Chilean earthquake struck on the 27th of February 2010 and measured 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. The epicentre was just off the coast of Chile on a destructive plate margin. The Nepalese earthquake struck on the 25th of April 2015 and measured 7.9 on the Richter scale. It hit around 80 kilometres to the north of Kathmandu in the Himalayan foothills on a destructive collision margin. We need to be aware that there are both primary effects, the things that happen at the time of the earthquake, stuff like the ground shaking, and then there are secondary effects as well. These happen as a consequence of the primary effects, and those can be things like fires and tsunamis. So, let's compare the primary and secondary effects for these earthquakes. In Chile, the primary effects included around 500 people killed and 12,000 injured, with 800,000 people affected. 220,000 homes, 4,500 schools and over 50 ports and hospitals destroyed. Ports and airports were badly damaged. Large areas of Chile lost power, water supplies and communications. The cost of the earthquake was estimated around 30 billion US dollars. In Nepal, the primary effects included around 9,000 people being killed and 20,000 injured with over 8 million people being affected. Three million people left homeless when their homes were destroyed. Water and electricity supplies, sanitation and communications were affected. 1.4 million people were in need of food, water and shelter in the days after the earthquake. 7,000 schools destroyed and hospitals were overwhelmed with the injured. 50% of shops were destroyed and this affecting food supplies along with people's livelihoods. The cost of the damage was estimated at over 5 billion US dollars. Well, straight away you can see that there are differences between a wealthy country and a less wealthy country, both in terms of the people who've been affected and the amount of damage that's been there. Well, let's now look at some of the secondary effects. In Chile, secondary effects included landslides that damaged around 1,500 kilometres of roads. This cut off many communities for a period of time. Coastal towns were devastated by tsunami waves, with other Pacific countries also being struck by the tsunami. A fire at a chemical plant meant the area had to be evacuated. Let's compare these to some of the secondary effects in Nepal. Landslides and avalanches were triggered, blocking roads and getting in the way of relief efforts. One landslide actually blocked a river, northwest of Kathmandu, meaning that many people had to be evacuated in case of flooding. Avalanches on Mount Everest killed 19 people, with another avalanche leaving 250 people missing. Countries will be affected in different ways by these events. Often, economic wealth can make a difference in both primary and secondary effects. What countries need to do is be aware of the risks and try to prepare as best they can.